In this video, I'm going to show you what a whole software as a service application looks like. And unlike the many videos out there talking about the tech stack that will make you a million dollars, I'm going to show you the principles that apply to all software as a service application. For example, I'm not going to talk about the framework that I use for my front end. Rather, I'm going to talk about how I plan out my application, what I use for authentication, how I email and verify users, different aspects of the application that apply to 99% of apps. And if we head over to the screen, we're going to talk about both my uh, starter kit that is coming out soon, as well as the platform. But with that being said, if you like the video, like and subscribe, it really go a long way. And let's get into it. So the first aspect of every sort of application is the UI UX. And I'm going to put it in here as well is just the planning of the application. Now, in a nutshell, UI UX is simply the process of planning out what your application will look like will do and how it will provide value to the users. And look, I am not the biggest lover towards UI UX, but there is value in at least doing some work because you need a game plan. And every application that I've worked on from this one to this one, if you watch some of the earlier videos, you will see that I was planning out what I wanted my app to look like. Because like in, in many games, right? Like in like, for example, basketball, you need a game plan to actually execute and do well, right? And the UI UX and planning gives you a game plan. Now the tools I use for my UI UX is Figma and Xcalibur are like this. So for example, in Figma, if I actually zoom in here, I apologize, you can see here you plan out just, this is from someone else, I didn't build this on my own, but I really like this and I wanted to use it out at a certain point, but you can see I actually took the color on my application. Um, but regardless, you can see here, we just, just plan out whatever we want. You know, we can build out pages that we think our app will look like or what we'd like it to look like. And I just think even if you're not gonna do a lot of it, having something or an idea or a vision of what you want your SaaS to be is always valuable. And you'd use this for any feature you want from authentication, backend, APIs, front end, whatever it may be. Now, the next aspect of a software app is code tracking. Look, every developer needs a way to track their code. Like in school, when we were writing essays, we had to use like Google Docs or Excel, whatever it may be at your school. In code, we need a way to track what we are doing. And to do that, we can use GitHub. And essentially GitHub acts as a way to screenshot your code whenever you see fit. So whenever you make changes into your own code here, or excuse me, over here, you can update it in the actual GitHub repository so that other people can either see it or you can remember what you wrote in case you made any mistakes or you want to go back to that previous version. And so here, maybe I wanted to change the metadata for my layout of my starter kit. It could just be um, starter kit. And maybe I wanted to add like a globe, right, to the emoji over here. I can just do something like this. And then rather than just hoping I will, for, you know, it would just be here. I can just go to my GitHub and you can see I'm in my Nizzy starter. And you can see over here that we have it saved like this. You can see it's tracked the changes. And I can commit this to GitHub where it will be saved. In addition, if you want to collaborate and do open source projects, like if your SaaS is open source, this is the perfect place because you can see here I have 37 stars and seven contributors to my application over here. So that's just one huge benefit of it. And frankly, if you're going to be developing applications, you need a way to track your code because if not, you're going to get really messy and you're going to hit your life in the development process because you're going to delete things on accident, you're going to do mistakes, you want to go back. And if you can't do that in a efficient manner, then what's the point of developing good applications, right? Now, I promise this won't be long, but the next aspect is the front end, back end and data. And I promise I will not spend much time here because everyone has a video on their tech stack and million dollar tech stack. But in an application, we have the front end, the back end, and a database or in a way to like communicate with them too. Now, in terms of what this could look like, let's say we are in my uh, platform, for example, the front end here would be maybe something like the authentication page. So here, you know, we had to design this and we had to make it look really pretty, right? That is all front end work. And for that, I use, just use Next.js and Tailwind CSS. And for the back end and the database, right? It is just the code written to manage whatever is here. This is the login form over here. If you really want to know, you're essentially just managing the data and then sending it to a back end or database like Neon or just a basic Postgres database. 
And so a little bit confusing here, but I'm using Next.js for the front end and then for the back end, depending on the application, but I'm probably going to use a Postgres database. It's just a way to manage data. It's not a really big deal what you use. There's stuff like SQL and just Postgres is my favorite. And for the ORM, I love ORMs. It's just a way to talk to a database easier in the front end. I'm using either Drizzle or Prisma. And the ORM acts as a way to manage data easier. This is not the database, although it may look like one because you're like doing this. This is just a way to manage it. So basically we would create a model user and then we would store the front end stuff in here. And then here in the case of schema of Prisma, we take this data or Prisma takes this data and then sends it to an external database. In our example, we're using Neon. But again, I don't want to spend too much time here because there's a lot of videos on it. I just, I don't want to do it. So here's what things get fun. Um, the next aspect of a whole application is authentication. And I think this is the first real principle that you will actually, you know, use because anyone knows about UI UX code and anyone can really use the language. But authentication is one of those things that every application in really any capacity needs. And why it's so important is that you need to know who your users are because, right? Not because we want the data, we want their email or we want their password. We can't even track their password. But if they wanted to pay, how will you know who the user is without authentication? You need a way to track users, know what they're doing and identify who they are so that if they pay, do something, want to let's say your app is like a communication app where they're FaceTiming or doing something like that. You need a way to identify who is who. And for me, I just use something like next off, like we just talked about. And trust me when I say this, don't worry too much about what the actual language is. Honestly, for the rest of this, even the UI UX, everything here, don't worry too much about the language. It's such a stupid thing to hyper focus on as a whole. What matters is that you're doing authentication, that you're tracking code that you are planning your application and that you know that you need a front end back end and a database so don't worry too much okay for me i just like next auth it's ideal for me because i'm using next.js and it's just a cool ecosystem that i enjoy using and so this takes us to the next aspect of a general software application and it is email tracking tracking sounds too much like a creepy thing just email storage and just marketing because you want to market stuff. So with any successful business comes an email list. It's basically a list of emails that your users have given consent to give you, right? Whether it be by you providing the value or logging in and you can directly contact them in their email. And email is the single best way to contact people because no one has control over it. If Google decides to ban or to remove you from their SEO search and rank you lower, whatever it may be, your business is screwed, but no one can ever take away your email list because it's all yours. Anyone can ban me on YouTube right now, but the email list is what will keep whether it be my business going or allow me to build momentum and get followers on a new account, right? However, for the longest time, it was really annoying to grab users' emails and store it somewhere as a developer. But luckily for us, we are in 2024 and there are tools to be able to manage emails from users and whatever I want, because they're stored in audiences here from resend, I can just, if I wanted to create an email and send out a cool little email and say, I'm announcing something, whatever it may be, I can just write it here. So hello world, maybe, and then write a bunch of things here with an email saying whatever I need, I'm selling this product or I'm doing this X, Y, Z. And there we have it. And I know this is a little bit dumb. You're thinking like, why do you need a place to store emails and talk to your users? You need a way to contact your users and let them know. Any business you know, right? When you're like signing up to like Apple Care or whatever it may be, you're getting an email from them. They need a way to talk to you or they, when, when it's time to announce something, right? They're gonna email you the new iPhones coming out, whatever it may be. When we are logging in here, right? I want the user to get a verification email where they are given a code that they can log in with. And essentially this is all the code needed to send the user an email and create a contact. I'm basically just sending them a confirmation link over here and sending a specific email that I want and then adding them to my audience where I can directly start contacting them. And it's just a great, great, great aspect of development. I neglected it for years, but you know, you got to focus on it. And I, I honestly got to start doing some email marketing as well, but store users email, have that data, not for any like predatory purposes, like selling it or anything like that, but have it, your users want, they like your content, 
or they like your business and, and the way for you to talk to them through emails is just so valuable. Now, the next aspect of every application software, whatever it may be, is analytics. Now, analytics is simply a way to track whatever is going on in your application. And let's say we have an application here, right? And this is just an example, right? This is the screen and this is all your, your stuff over here. When we implement something like analytics, it allows us to see what the users like and don't like. So let's say we have a button down here and you know, this, this is the coolest looking button ever. If we implement analytics the right way, we can directly see how many times the user is clicking this button or not clicking this button so that if they're not clicking the button, we could just remove it and use this very valuable space, right? Because space is valuable for something better. And for me, at least all I use for analytics is Vercel. They have an analytics dashboard when you deploy and you install it. And essentially over here, you can see stuff like the countries that are viewing your website, what type of operating system, um, what browser, where they're coming from. As you can see, a lot of people are from YouTube pages, etc. In addition, you can like upgrade that I don't want to upgrade right now and you can get in depth sort of data. And again, if you want to know, I'm not even sure if you, <laughs> you want to know this, but it's really just stored here. So I just had to import, where is it? Analytics from Vercel Analytics. And then in the root of my application, I just grabbed it over here. But you can also use something like Google Analytics. I was using it, but I'm not anymore, just for personal preference. But there is that just in case you want it. Now, the next part of a software app is obviously the deployment. And again, we deploy because obviously we want people to see our app and we can't make any sales if, <laughs> if people can't deploy. That's why this is a little bit of a dumb one, but I just wanted to talk about it regardless. And what I use for deployment is Vercel, which we I'm going to show you. That's the one I mainly use, but you can also use stuff like AWS and Netlify. But these platforms will allow you to let users see where your app is, what it does and buy stuff, hopefully. And all you really need to do is just I like Vercel, you just add a new one, deploy, and then you can easily even manage everything over here. And this can get the cool analytics at least for um, Vercel. Now the last two aspects of uh, software is both logs, and I'm gonna put the last one over here and we'll just get into it later, is SEO. Now logs simply allows you to track, again, what is going on in your application, not in the sense of what the users like and don't like, but in terms of what errors you're getting and success messages you're getting. And all I use is Vercel. I know, I know, I know Vercel, everything. For me, it's deployed there. So wherever you deployed your application, you will have a log section where you can see everything that went right or wrong. So in here, right, you can see on May 7th, someone was in slash stripe slash info, which is a course of mine. It's a free course. And you can see that people are doing this. But what's important, right? It's not, again, what they're doing. That's important. It's cool to know, but we already have a section for that. But rather, uh, it's to check for errors. And the max we can go here is an hour. But even here, you can see that we have no errors, which is good. But I wanted to show you if there was an error or not. However, if there was an error, then we could see it over here. And it's just valuable and very, very underrated to see if your users are even running into errors. Because if they are, that's a big deal and you'd want to know. Like for us here, we can see no errors. Thank God. And finally, over here, the final aspect is SEO. Now, SEO is simply the art of ranking higher on a search page. So for example, let's say I'm looking up something like how to finally be a good developer after two years because I suck, right? And your app, let's say, is in this field, right? You help developers become better, okay? You, your site, right, wants to rank high over here. You wanna be ideally in the top two because like 90% of all sites are picked up here. And luckily we can do a couple of things to do that because it's freaking valuable. If you rank up here, you have the chance to make so much money, especially if it's a good search. And here, you know, for example, you can do stuff like a sitemap.ts, a robot, as well as some metadata over here. And look, I know man, it's extra work because you basically have three extra parts of an app but it is a huge, a huge part that people tend to forget about. However, luckily I actually made a video on it. So if you wanna check that out, then I will leave that over here. Happy coding and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.